In today's video, I'm doing a smoke brisket on a pellet smoker. Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue, Wisconsin, and welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. This was the first actual cook using the Smoke Daddy vertical pellet smoker, and it did an incredible job. Yes, you've seen some other videos before this one, but hey, I had to get my holiday cooks posted, right? So grab a bag of pellets and a roll of butcher paper, Jared. We're gonna amplify some backyard barbecue fun. I'm gonna trim up this 17 pound prime packer brisket, but I'm not gonna trim it overly aggressive. Most of the fat that I'll be taking off is over on the point end. On this flat side, I'm gonna leave a little bit more fat on it. On this Pellet Pro Vertical 2300, I am gonna do this fat cap down, so I wanna leave a little bit more of a protection on it. We'll just start cutting off some of this big, thick, heavy fat. As you start skimming across it, if you start exposing a little bit of that meat, well, back that knife off a little bit. This certainly isn't gonna render, so we gotta get this off. This pile right here, I'm gonna go ahead and freeze up, and we're gonna save this for when we do some sausage. Never cut towards yourself, and it always helps to just go ahead and put your hand underneath there to kind of bump it up a little bit. Trimming up on this side now. Fortunately, this one's got a big gash right here, but, well. Couldn't see that in the cryovac. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you see that I typically get pretty aggressive when I trim these up. But on the fat cap side today, I'm gonna leave a bunch of it on there. Let's flip it over. Now any of this silver skin you don't wanna keep for any type of sausage or anything. This flat is so thin on this end. And we'll round these corners a little bit. I've said this and a lot of you guys already know, but the grain is running this direction. So when we cut up our slices, we're gonna go in this pattern, right? Like here. Then when we get up around the point, then we'll go ahead and cut it in this direction. Now I am gonna season up the fat cap side, and for today we're just gonna go ahead and use some big old chunks of sea salt. Now just because it's really big and flaky, it really doesn't add a lot more salt to it. The rub that I'm using today is from PS Seasoning. It's their Smoky Texas Barbecue Rodeo Rub. PS Seasoning is right from Wisconsin and I'm really excited to be a part of their ambassador program. They've got all kinds of kits from sausage to rubs to sauces to even cinnamon rolls. It's gonna start coating up the fat cap side with their Texas Barbecue Rodeo Rub. And I can smell that it's actually smoky. Get a little bit on the sides right away. And like always, tappity tap. Let's flip her over and get her on the flat side. A little bit of our big old flaky salt rock. Get that out there. And I know it looks scary, but trust me, it actually isn't that salty. And we'll get this flat side all covered up good. Hopefully I got enough in my shaker. Kind of planned it out. And the same thing, tappity tap, don't talk back. Now I'm just gonna take this brisket and put it in a foil pan, but I'm gonna leave it uncovered and put it in the fridge until when I get ready to cook it tomorrow morning. So I'll see you tomorrow out by the smoker and we're gonna get this brisket under some smoke. All right, it's the next day and it's time to go ahead and get that brisket under some smoke. But first, we're gonna go ahead and set up our Pellet Pro vertical smoker. Now today I'm gonna to be using my Heavy D insert and I have some post oak in here. Now the Heavy D is just like your standard deflector, but it just has these little slides that fit right over the top of it and you can see that they kind of fit right into place. We'll go ahead and open up our cabinet and then just place the Heavy D right on top of the fire pot. Now I'll put in my drip tray. I'm gonna take one of my racks, put it right here on the bottom, and that's where I'm gonna put a water pan. And we'll put this grate in, but this middle rack is the one that I'm gonna to wanna to cook in. And then we'll get the Pellet Pro started up. I'm gonna turn the power on, and we're gonna turn it right to low smoke. Now I'm just gonna set a timer for 15 minutes, and by then, the Pellet Pro will be heated up to that 160 degrees. So our 15 minute timer went off, let's go ahead and load up this brisket. But you can see from sitting in that fridge, she's got a nice color going on right now. We're gonna place this just like that, right in the center of the rack. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and dome this thing up so that moisture runs off the top. So I just take a chunk of wood, a couple on this one, get it right underneath there, pull her down a little bit, 
and that'll help all of that water to run off this brisket so we don't get any pooling and that'll help that bark set easier also. Close up our door and now I'm gonna set a timer for one hour. We just wanna have this run at 160 degrees under that extra smoke and that'll help us get a little bit more smoky flavor on this brisket. Did I say I'm gonna set a timer for one hour? Yeah. Okay. All right, my one hour timer went off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the Pellet Pro vertical up to 275 degrees. And then we're also gonna just take a look at this brisket. Press it to medium and press one plus. Now when you're using the Heavy D, you are gonna get a little bit more smoke, so just be ready for that part of it. Let's go ahead and pull this one out. Well, you can see that we're starting to get some smoky color, but I'm gonna go ahead and just give this just a quick little spritz on it for right now. With that water pan in there, we don't have to add a lot of moisture to it, but it never hurts to give a little bit extra. And now I'm gonna insert one of my probes for my signals, and they have these nice little grommets on the side. Just go ahead and you'll stick it through. Then we'll go through this top rack on the side here, and we're just gonna insert it in the thicker part of the flat here. And I'm gonna say that's a good spot right about there. And now I'm gonna set a timer for one hour, and I'm just gonna keep on checking that temperature. Once I get around 175 degrees, I'm gonna wrap it up with some butcher paper and I'll bring you back for that part of it. Now that we've turned the heat up a little bit, you can see that that heavy D, that post oak is starting to burn a little bit. Now don't worry, I've got a small little fan over here that blows all the smoke right out the garage door. All right, I'm four hours into this cook. Let's go ahead and check out this brisket. I had to get a drink first. Pull the brisket out. Now I did rotate it 180 degrees about an hour ago. All right, well our rub is starting to stick, giving off a little, quit wiggling around. If you have to stand back for right now, stand. My rub is starting to stick. It's getting a little jello-y, that's the good sign. But we still got a ways to go. It's only at about 140 degrees. But I'll give it just a quick little spritz. Don't have to do much. That's good. Now I'll just go ahead and close her back up. Set a timer for another hour. Now most likely, I'm going to run this brisket up to about 175 degrees and then I'll wrap it up in some butcher paper. I'm six and a half hours into this cook and the brisket is reading almost at 175 degrees. Let's check it out, but my guess is I'm gonna pull it and put it in some butcher paper. Pull it out the shelf. Oh yeah, I like this bark. I think it's a good time to go ahead and wrap it up. Pull out our probe. Ooh, look at all that juice come out. Holy cow, that's awesome. Get some spritz on this butcher paper. And I'm gonna flip it over. And we're just gonna start with the wrap part. Get your edge folded in, get her tight right up to here, and we're gonna keep it together and flop it over. We'll go back to where we got fat cap down, and we're gonna put it in just like this. Get it back on our grate, and then take your probe, and you're gonna wanna find that thicker part of the flat again. Now you are going through a couple pieces of paper, but be careful, going slowly, you don't wanna puncture it all the way through the whole wrap. That should be a good spot right here. Close her up. Now I'm just gonna set a timer for one hour and keep monitoring my signals and see where I'm reading at. Once I get around that 200 degrees, I'll come out and start probing it and see where our temperatures are. I'm looking at pulling this brisket at about 205 degrees. All right, I'm 10 hours into this cook and my temperature is at 205 degrees. It's actually 10 hours and 15 minutes on the dot. Now I don't know if you can see this, but there's a lot of moisture coming off of that butcher paper. Check some internals here. Oh yeah. 203, 204, 205. Now I can most definitely tell in this area, it's nice and tender. And let's just check the point. That's pure butter. Go ahead and I'll put this in the foil pan and then we'll just go ahead and shut down the 2300. And that's gonna go into a 15 minute cool down period. Take the brisket and put it right in the cambro. So I'll see you at the cutting board in about four hours. So this brisket is rested for four hours in my cambro. I can't wait any longer. Let's go ahead and unwrap it and let's go ahead and start carving it up. There certainly is a ton of moisture in this butcher paper. It smells incredible. And I can certainly say we've got some good bark going on here. But I can't wait any longer, I gotta try this brisket. Now you can see 
that the grain is running this way. So I'm just gonna start off right here. I'm gonna get right through it, take a look. Oh yeah, there's a lot of moisture. I hope you guys can see that part. Now the point, we're just gonna go ahead, turn it this way, and we'll just lop this right in half right here. You know I'm not a brisket squeezer, but this is tender too. Nice and jello-y. Cut off a piece of the flat real quick here. Get that out. And just cut off a little chunk. Oh God. Awesome, really good. The bark is nice and crispy. Wow, get into this piece right here. So I got a nice smoke ring. Hopefully that's showing up on the camera. Go ahead and lop off a piece from the point. And when you achieve that really nice bark, it just really keeps this brisket together. The Smoky Texas Barbecue Rodeo Rub. I'm pretty impressed, PS Seasoning. I got a lot of videos coming, so stay tuned. Now it's the next day, but I figured a lot of people would wonder, how did the Heavy D perform and is there any wood left in it? Let's grab it out. Here goes nothing. Nothing but ash. See it on the other side also. And that brisket had a ton of smoky flavor. So I'm gonna tell you, if you're interested, make sure that you pick one of these up because it will enhance any of your smoking that you do. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and become a subscriber. Turn on that notification bell because you don't wanna miss my next video. And I think you should actually share this with a friend. I know you have at least a couple of them, so why not share it even more? But I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next video. There's some decent grind of pepper in here. I just don't want to leave it on the cutting board to get it back on the brisket. The more of the pepper, the better. I was so excited to see what this looked like this morning and see how the Pellet Pro 2300 did. Did real good. Mm -hmm. Have a chunk.